Welcome to Hoko Polizzo's Poetry Moment. Poet Terence Hayes writes often about prisons. His mother, father, and cousin worked in them. Hayes occasionally teaches writing in them. And in America, men and boys that look like Hayes are shut inside those cells at a shocking rate. Hayes is a writer and teacher who won the National Book Award in 2010 and visited Howard County audiences in 2011. During this poetry moment, we'll listen to Hayes read Carp poem, a single sentence describing the world of men packed into the locked boxes of prison. In its 22 lines, this poem weaves together images of Jesus walking on water, the loaves and the fishes miracle feeding carp in Japan and the school to prison pipeline. The speaker in the poem is a poet walking into a prison to teach writing to young black men wearing the blazing orange jumpsuits of incarceration. Then Hayes makes a leap from boys packed into a New Orleans Parish jail to the orange carp glimmering and wriggling in a pond in Japan. Hayes juxtaposes the speaker's stroll around a carp pond in Asia with the life of the men trapped in that New Orleans jail. And by the last line, the reader senses the ferocity of their need, like the fish struggling to catch the tiny balls of rice dropped by tourists. In a recent interview, Hayes talked about the way metaphor is a bridge between things that may seem different. He said, I think of metaphor as a gesture of empathy. The metaphor is always reaching to connect to something else. It is a figurative gesture which allows poems to be everything else in terms of language. I find that superb, super freeing. So this is a cart poem. It's one sentence. After I have parked below the spray paint caked into the granite grooves of the Frederick Douglass Middle School sign where men-sized children loiter like shadows draped in outsized denim, jerseys, braids, and boots that mean I am no longer young, after I have made my way to the New Orleans Paris jail down the block where the black prison guard wears the same weariness my prison guard father wears buzzes me in. I follow his pistol and shield along each corridor, trying not to look at the black men boxed and bunked around me until I reach the tiny classroom where two dozen black boys are dressed in jumpsuits, orange as the carp I saw in a pond once in Japan. So many fat, snaggletooth fish ganged in and lurching for food that a lightweight tourist could have crossed the water on their backs, so long as he had tiny rice balls or bread to drop into the mouths below his footstep, which I'm thinking is how Jesus must have walked on the lake that day, the crackers and crumbs falling from the folds of his robe, and how maybe it was the one fish so hungry it leapt up his sleeve that he later miraculously changed into a narrow loaf of bread, something that could stick to a believer's ribs. And don't get me wrong, I'm a believer too, in the power of food at least, having seen a footbridge of carp packed gill to gill, packed tighter than a room of boy prisoners waiting to talk poetry with a young black poet, packed so close they'd have eaten each other if there'd been nothing else to eat. Mm.